What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to cook the best recipes for food in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm not going to be talking about the bad foods or going over roasting food that's just throwing it on a fire without actually cooking it or elixirs in this video because let's face it you want to save all that uh all those monster parts to get the dark armor. Am I right? Ha! Nope. Grab a cooking pot that magically fills with water and ingredients and let's go. I'm going to be going over the best recipes for max temporary hearts, max temporary stamina, max attack, defense, stamina recovery, stealthiness, and speed boost. Because you know, you have clothing for the hot and cold ones. I'm also going to be going over the special effects that cooking during a blood moon will have. Ooh, yeah, the blood moon affects the recipes that you cook. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Already hitting you with the knowledge. I want to say that your main focus of benefit enhancing food should not be hearts. That's what you have apples, birds, and meat for. You're going to have those for hearts, and you're going to have these for benefits. Keep in mind, cooking food with different benefits will cancel out the benefits, so only go for one at a time. Every food item can be placed into a grade, and the more food that you have of a higher grade, the better, but not always. Also, I've done experiments for cooking with reloading my save file for about five hours to come up with this list. So be sure to drop a like and show your appreciation for my hard work and dedication. It's easy, just click it, I'll wait. Five seconds, five seconds for five hours of gameplay, then editing and recording sounds fair, right? Great, first little disclaimer about critical cooking. There's a slight chance that when you cook something, it'll be a critical cook and it'll have a boosted effect. When the cook animation is done, the sound is going to be slightly different at the end. It's going to have a little bit of a, of a gong sound to it. It's really hard to miss unless you're listening on big speakers. So here's what it sounds like. Turn your volume up. Okay, now turn your volume down. One way to guarantee a critical cook is to cook between the time of 11.30 p.m. and 11.55 p.m. right before a blood moon. You can talk to this guy at the Dueling Peak Stable to find out if a blood moon is going to happen that night. If you want to plan your cooking around a blood moon, which is recommended, then a full cycle is 8 in-game days, and a blood moon is randomly selected from those full moons. You could also guarantee a critical cook by adding a star fragment or a dragon's body part, but that takes up a cooking slot. So okay, no further delays. First, Mighty Food. Any dish with the name Mighty in front of it gives you a boost to your attack, from one to three stages. A critical cook, or blood moon critical cook, can boost it by an extra three hearts, a boosted five minutes duration, or a boosted tier of effect. The only grade A food for Mighty attack food is a Mighty Porgy. Each one that you cook will give you two hearts and 50 seconds of attack boosting. Cooking one will give you a level one boost, cooking two gives you a level two boost, and three fish will give you a level three boost. Any more than that, and you're just wasting fishies. A close runner up is the mighty carp and the razor claw crab, then the mighty bananas and razor shroom. For the carp and the crab, they each restore two hearts when cooked and 50 seconds of effect. Cooking one will get you a level one boost, two are needed for a level two boost, but four are needed for a level three boost. Do keep in mind that you can mix and match any food with the same boosting benefits. Slightly behind the carp and the crab is the nana and the shroom. Both give you one heart each and 50 seconds of duration. You need to cook three for a level two effect and you need to cook four for a level five effect. With that being said, you could cook a mighty porgy with any other two foods I mentioned for attack boosting and get a level three. So doing that, you get the most out of your fishy. Or you do two mighty porgies and three mighty thistles for max time and power without wasting any second tier items. Next is tough food, and this is for a defense boost. It's going to be quite similar to the mighty category. All the food I'm going to mention in this category is going to give you 50 seconds per item. The best item is the armored porgy. You need three of these for a full tier 3 defense boost. Just below that is the armored carp and the iron shell crab. You'll need two for level 2 and four for level 3. Slightly below that is the Iron Shroom and Fortified Pumpkin. You're going to need three for level two and four for level three. Likewise, you could cook an Armored Porgy with any other two foods I mentioned here for a defense boost and get it to level three. Enduring. This is going to be for an extra stamina wheel or two. There are only two items found in this game that give you that bonus. And in order of awesomeness, the Endora Carrot and the Endora Shroom. Each of these recipes will replenish your stamina, so you should use them wisely when you're in a pinch. 
Each Endora carrot will give you 4 hearts and 40% of an additional stamina meter. So 2 for 4 fifths, 3 for 1 and 1 fifth, 4 for 1 and 3 fifths, 5 for 2 full stamina wheels. The Endura Shroom will only give you a fifth of a stamina wheel until you cook 4 and then it's 2 fifths of a stamina wheel. So Endura Carrots are the best for stamina wheels. They can be found behind the Great Fairy near Kakariko Village. However, you may only want to cook one at a time. Each one that you eat is going to give you full restoration of your stamina wheel plus two fifths. Energizing is to replenish your lost stamina. Keep in mind that you cannot over replenish your stamina, so you may not want max stamina regeneration. A great A item for this is the Salmonoka Bass. Each one is going to restore two hearts and cooking one replenishes one full stamina circle. 2 gives you 2 and a fifth stamina circles, and 3 gets you 3 full circles. Below that is the Bright Eye Crab and Coarser Bee Honey. Each one gives you 2 fifths of a circle and 3 fifths for every one after the first. So 2 for 1 circle, 3 for 1 and 3 fifths, 4 for 2 and 2 fifths, and 5 for 2 and 4 fifths. Staminella shrooms restore a small amount, 1 for a fifth, 2 for 2 fifths, 3 for 4 fifths, 4 for 1, and 5, 1, and 2 fifths. I know it's weird, right? So for this, you may want to have lots of smaller items. Never cook more than 2 Salmonoka bass, 2 crab or honey give you a full ring, and never cook more than 3 Staminella shrooms. Next is Sneaky, Sneaky Sneaky. The best item, bar none, is the Silent Princess. Each one that you cook is going to give you 2 hearts and 2 minutes of an effect. 2 are needed for level 2 and 3 are needed for level 3. This rare flower is found near the Great Fairy Fountains, the Master Sword, and other spiritually majestic areas. Below that is the Silent Shroom and Stealth Fin Trout. Every shroom is one heart, every fishy is two hearts. You need to get three for level two effect and you need five for level three effect. So to optimize this, you would do three Silent Shrooms or Trout with a Silent Princess. Up next is Hasty. For this, it's all about the Fleet Lotus Seed. You need 3 for level 2 and 4 for level 3. The Rush Room is the only other item that provides a speed boost, but you need 5 of them to even hit level 2. So 3 shrooms and 2 seeds is going to give you a level 3 with max duration, so use your seeds sparingly. And last, but certainly not least, the recipe for extra temporary hearts. This one doesn't have a clear answer because you can only have a max of 30 hearts in the game between your full hearts and temporary hearts. So at early levels, yeah, you'll be trying to max them out as much as possible, but later in the game, you'll need to cook your temporary hearts more strategically to utilize the ingredients the most. The grade A item here is the Big Hearty Radish, gives you 5 hearts. Grade B is the Big Hearty Truffle, the Hearty Durian, and the Hearty Salmon. Those are 4 hearts each. Grade C is a Hearty Radish for 3 hearts. Grade D is a hearty bass for two hearts, and grade E is the hearty truffle for one heart. So the most hearts you could possibly have with five hearty radishes is 25 temporary hearts. But if you have any more than five in game, you're just gonna be wasting your radishes. Also, one super important thing to note here is that every one of these ingredients will give you full restoration of your hearts. So if you have a total of 25 full hearts and you're down to your last heart, a single cooked truffle will restore all of your health and give you a temporary heart. So for later in the game, that might definitely be a good strategy. So now to recap everything. You want to attack three mighty porgies, and then for the other two slots, throw in some mighty thistles for max duration. Defense, three armored porgy, and throw in two armoranth for duration. Two of each of those fish can be found in the very bottom right of the map, in the small pond island to the right of Eventide Island. You want extra stamina? Cook as many endura carrots and shrooms as you get your hands on, but separately. Gotta go fast? Three rush rooms and two lotus seeds. You want to be as quiet as Big Boss? That's a Metal Gear Solid reference. Three silent shrooms or stealth fin trout with a single silent princess. You want to fill your stamina or want extra hearts? Screenshot this clip right here. Boop. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your official Austin John Plays cooking guide strategy for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Until I started writing this, I was just cooking stuff aimlessly. If you want a guide on elixirs, let me know in the comment section down below. I didn't think it was necessary because I sold all of my monster parts to be able to get the Dark Link armor. 
Let's see if we can get this video to 5,000 likes. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Till next time, Austin John out.